All right, so we're going to do an Arc Linux install. Um, I'm going to try and guide it, and I'm going to make a couple of different videos in a series breaking up the installation because to me that makes a little bit more sense than having them all in one install and then having to navigate through different time frames on the video. Um, so yeah, we are going to break it up. We're going to do the preparation and part one in this video for you know, basically getting the system ready and preparing the hard drives. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. First thing, I'm actually going to switch. I have two different computers. The one that you're looking at now is the one we're going to be installing on, and then I have another one that I'm going to pop up in a minute for um, going over just some basic preparation stuff. So we'll turn that one on. Obviously, that's my recording program. We're going to um, go first and download Arc Linux. We've got a little link right here, and that'll be in the guide as well. So we open that up, paste this, okay, and we scroll down to whatever my country is, which is, I'm in the United States, we'll go down here, pick one of these, I picked aggregate, then we'll just, we just want the 6.1 dual, I, uh, you know, 2015 6.1 dual ISO, click that, download it, obviously I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to our downloads, and there it is. The other thing you're going to need is a small free program called Rufus. This is for Windows. I do have um, in my guide the code for Linux for just burning it to USB on Linux, which is right here. But we're going over Windows because that's what a lot of people use and what I'm using for um, this machine that's already up. So we download Rufus, open it here. You select the device right here, which basically you plug in your USB drive, and um, then you open Rufus. You, sometimes Rufus won't detect it, so you'll have to close it, put the USB device in there, open it again. Um, parti you can ignore partition scheme, file size, cluster size. Just leave those as the defaults. You don't need a, a volume label either. You can leave that unchecked. Quick format's fine. Um, where it says create a bootable disk, make sure that's checked. You're going to change this to ISO image. You're going to choose that by clicking that little button that was there that you can't really see now, right there. Okay, and then you're going to choose the Arc Linux, uh, Arc Linux ISO right here. Okay, it'll come up with this thing that says ready, and once you have your device selected, you just hit start. This bar will turn green and start, you know, progressing. And once it finishes, that's done with that. You can hit close. Um, if you did it on the same machine, you can just leave the USB stick plugged in. If you did it on a different machine, then unplug the USB stick and stick it in the machine that you're trying to install on. Okay. So that's done for that. Now I'm going to go here and show you what you need to do in the BIOS. Uh, we are going over fairly new. Um, fairly new motherboards well this is an MSI gaming 5 it's a you know with, made within the last two years um, I'm not gonna go over how to do it on older systems or non EFI build cuz it's 2015 I I'm not gonna do anything that's not old or not EFI so let's go ahead and reboot here I'm going to spam delete because that's my key in order to get to the BIOS, like it says right there on that red line. There's my BIOS. Okay, motherboard settings, and boot, and boot mode select UEFI. You want to make sure that this is UEFI. I don't use legacy plus UEFI because it, for me, for this motherboard, doesn't work properly. Um, for some reason it wants to default to legacy so I just make sure everything's selected all is UEFI okay um, it's different obviously it's different per different motherboards so you'll just have to look around for it it may say EFI it may say UEFI most say UEFI just make sure it's enabled so you do that you hit save and exit I'm not gonna hit it because I've already done it so I'm just gonna hit re uh, control it delete to reboot now since I already have the USB stick plugged in, I'm going to spam my F11 key to get to the boot menu, like I just said. OK. 
Okay, UEFI Sense and DS Pro. That's my USB stick. Okay, now we're going to choose Arc Linux right here. Give it a minute to boot up. And I'm going to pull up my notes here while this is going so that I can kind of read them off to you as I'm doing it. All right, there we go. Um, now, the first thing we need to do, um, we're going to ping Google just to make sure that our internet connection is working. Um, I will make a separate video for configuring Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't have a Wi-Fi card in this machine right now. I have one on my laptop. So when I get around to you know open, cracking open my laptop, I'll make another separate video and show you how to c configure the Wi-Fi. Um, for now, we'll just do ping C three www.google.com. Okay, it pings. We're good. We have internet. Okay, we need that. Next thing we've got to do is make sure that we're using EFI, that we've booted into EFI. EFI VARS dash L. Oops. Make sure I got that right. Oh, it's VAR, not VARS. Whoops. Okay, we hit that and it lists all of the EF EFI variables. As long as you get some crazy list that looks like this, you're fine. It means that you are in EFI mode. Okay, so we got that. We're in the correct modes. We have internet. Um, now we're going to move on to actually preparing the drives. We're going to do ls blk. Okay, this is going to list our drives. Um, SDA is the main drive that we're going to be working with. That's my SSD drive. Um, I'm going to be wiping it completely and redoing the partition table. SDB is my storage drive. We're not going to be touching that because that's where all of my backup shit is. So, yeah. Uh, not not gonna mess with that. If that gets wiped, I'm screwed. <laughs> so we're gonna do um, start with G disk dev SDA. Okay, it's gonna find your the default scheme. We're gonna wipe it. So we're gonna hit X, and that should give us the um, expert commands. Then we're gonna hit Z, and that's going to zap the partition table on that drive. Okay, proceed. Hit yes. Blank out the MBR, yes. Now see how it says MBR protective? There's a 1007 kilobyte section that you're not gonna be able to do anything with on the disk, that's the protective MBR, and that's just part of the GPT partition scheme. There's nothing you can do about it, you can't rewrite it, you can't remove it, that's part of the scheme. So if you kinda of freak out when you're trying to create partitions, don't, don't worry about it. You're okay, you're safe. I racked my brain for hours trying to figure that out. So we're going to hit yes on this. That's done. Now we're going to do um, create our new partitions with CG disk. Uh, dev SDA. I forgot to type it. Okay, it's going to give you this option. Obviously, we just wiped the partition table, and it's going to give us this option to try and auto detect. Just hit enter, and there we go. We got a whole blank disk that we can work with. So we're going to do new. And we're going to do our boot drive first. Um, the first sector that's fine, you hit enter. The size. Uh, Arc Wiki recommends that the boot partition is roughly 200, 300 megabytes. But I like to have a little bit of room to breathe, especially if I have different um, Linux boot images on there. So I give it about one gigabyte for um, you know just some some breathing room for boot purposes. So we're going to type in 1024GIB or uh, excuse me, MIB 1000 gigabytes, whoops, there we go 1024MIB, uh, that's one gigabyte. Hex code, we're going to use EF00. Um, there are some guides out there that tell you to use EF02, but the problem is EF02 is for uh, MBR and not for EFI. Um, couple of guides that I was doing or uh, going through when I was trying to initially set this up that's another thing I racked my brain about I was setting first off I was trying to get rid of this little section that's about to pop up watch I'll hit EF00 type boot for the name okay now see there's the um, there's the 1007 kilobyte 
section I was talking about. You do not have to worry about this. It's perfectly fine. Nothing's going to happen. You don't have to try and worry about why your partition won't go as the first in the list. It doesn't matter the order. Um, so, yeah, the other thing I was saying was the EF02 is for MBR booting and not EFI. And I had MBR on here before after I'd set up my whole system and was trying to figure out why the fuck it wasn't booting. And that was the issue. All right, so we got uh, our boot partition made. Next, we're going to do our swap partition. Um, you know, move down to your free space, hit new. First sector's fine. Second, the size. Um, there's a lot of argument about this. Um, some people want to know... Should I use a swap drive? Should I not use a swap drive? I have an SSD. I have, you know, a huge, you know, amount of RAM. The bottom line is, you really do want a swap. Um, the not just to have it, but for the purposes of how Linux uses it. Um, what Linux does is it takes your applications that are um, inactive or not being use, used, and it stores them in your swap drive. Okay, so what happens is if you don't have a swap drive and say you have a bunch of, like a ton of Firefox tabs open, right? And so it's eating up your memory. So what it tries to do is it tries to take those um, instances that are inactive on those tabs and it tries to stick it into swap in order to make, you know, allow itself to have more memory, more physical memory. Um, if you don't have a swap open, then what's going to happen is it's going to start closing random programs in order to make that memory happen because it needs memory and you're out of memory and it has nowhere to put any of the crap that's already open. So that's one of the reasons you want to swap drive. The second is if you want to use hibernation, when your computer goes into hibernation, it takes everything, every program that's running and it stores it in swap. And then whenever you come out of hibernation, obviously it reads it from swap and transfers it back. So if you want to use hibernation, not only do you need a swap, but you need a, a, a larger swap. Um, so what we're gonna do, um, the general rule as, a, as in regards to Red Hat, they have a guide. Um, I have all my references listed as well on this guide, but Red Hat suggests that if you're between 8 to 64 gigabytes, let me scroll down here and make sure I'm checking my words. Yeah, 8 to 64 gigabytes. If you don't want to use hibernation, you can use like 0.5 times the amount of RAM you have. So if I had a you know 16 gigabytes of RAM times 0.5, was that 4? 16 times 0.5, it's 8. Yeah, that's half. Mm, do maths <laughs> anyway so um, if I wasn't going to use hibernation I could just do an 8 gigabyte swap but I do want to use hibernation and so Red Hat suggests if you do want to use it instead of uh, using 0.5 you would use 1.5 so I have 16 gigabytes of RAM 1.5 would be 16 plus another 8 which is 24 so for the size we're going to do 24 GIB our swap. Okay, hex code for swap it for Linux is eight two zero zero. Okay, new partition name swap. That's done. Okay, the next part we're gonna do is um, our root drive or a root partition and our home partition. Now, some people don't like to have a home partition separate. Some people just ignore it and put it, uh, you know, have it set inside root by default. Um, I like to have a separate home partition. So if if you're in the first case, you can, you know, go down to your free space, hit new, hit whatever, enter for the first sector. And for the size, you can hit enter as well. And that'll just take the remainder of the disk. And um, then you hit enter one more time to type in your name as type in the name as root and you're done with that. But I actually want a separate partition for my home drive um, or home partition. So we're still going to create root first, 
but we're going to limit the size of root to what ArcWiki recommends, which is uh, fi roughly 15 to 20 gigabytes. So we're going to do 20 GIB right there. Hex code is fine. It's going to just be X4, so that's fine. And then we're going to type in root. Okay, and then we're going to use the remainder of the disk for home. So we're going to click this again. My roommate's running the hairdryer. <laughs> uh, first sector is fine. Size is uh, fine. It's going to take up the remainder. Hex code's fine. And we're going to enter um, home for that. All right, so that's done. Those are, that's how our partitions are going to be set up. We're going to hit right. Yes. Let it do its thing there. And then we're going to, and that's it. That we Now we should hit, hit exit. Okay. So we did that. Um, our partitions are written. And before I do anything else, I'm going to reboot just to make sure that those new partitions take place and that it's not still trying to read the old partitions. So let's go ahead and reboot. And spam F11 again, so it can reboot into there. Choose Arc Linux again. I'm just adding something to my notes here. Okay, so we're back here. Um, LSBLK to list our partitions again, make sure they're there. Boom, they're there. Okay, now we need to uh, tell Linux what kind of file systems to use for those partitions. Um, we're going to do start with our boot section or our boot partition, mkfs dot fat f32. If you're wondering why I'm using fat, it's because EFI for the boot sector requires fat32. So you have to use this command for um, the boot drive. Uh, SDA1, that's done. Next, we're gonna make our swap drive, MK swap, dev SDA2. Okay, now we gotta turn the swap on, so swap on, dev SDA2. Okay, now we gotta designate our root and our home as the standard ext4 file systems. mkfs dot ext4 dev sda3. Yes. mkfs dot ext4 dev sda4. Yes. Let that do its thing. Now we got some brand new spanking clean uh, partitions. Okay, I'm gonna um, end this video here because it's gone on for you know quite a little minute, and we're gonna restart and do another video for um, actually installing Arc. Okay, so yeah, next video. Check out the next video. The links are at the bottom.